Okay, Matrix, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing the isometric drawing question of the DBE November 2023 past paper. And you can see I've got the question laid out right in front of me. So first of all, I just want to apologize for the lighting. It is obviously overcast at the time of filming, so it is going to be a little bit dimmer in here. But you should still be able to see the work that we're going to do. Okay, so starting here, it says, given the front view, top view and right view of a sliding guide casting, using scale 1 to 1, convert the orthographic, orthographic views of the sliding guide casting into a sectional isometric drawing on cutting plane AA, make P the lowest point of the drawing, draw construction, and no hidden detail is required. So, if you have a look at these three drawings here, we obviously know that we have been given a front view, top view, and a right view, okay? And because this is an isometric drawing, we're obviously working in third orthographic, which means we follow the pattern of top, front, and right. So given that here, we know this is our top view, this is our front view, and this will be our right view. Okay, now that we have got that ready, you can see that they have also given you point P, now it is important to notice that point P is not this point here, it is this point here. And you can obviously see that they indicated on all sides. So do not get confused with that. Otherwise your drawing is going to look a little bit funky. Okay, so we're going to start off obviously by drawing lines by our point P. So we are going to be using... A study degree ruler here. Sorry, let me just move some stuff that is in my way. Okay, it's also important to note that we have been told that we will be cutting the sliding guide casting into an isometric drawing and cutting plane AA. So you can see we've got the cut at this point over here. Okay, so keep that in mind and I say that because obviously it's important that you now keep your lines as neat little construction lines so that you do not have to erase any lines. Okay, so we've started off by drawing our 30 degree line and then we are going to do a second 30 degree line like this and I also like to do a line going straight up in the middle just so that we have three lines like this over here. Okay, so we know point P starts at this point here where there is a height of 36. So we're going to take our ruler, we are going to measure the height of 36, which will be this point over here. And we're going to draw a line at this point here. And at this point over here. Okay, second thing is we're going to take the full length of this shape here, which is a 96. We obviously know the cut happens straight in the middle. So first we're going to measure 96 over here. And then we're going to find our middle point, which will be 48. Okay. So once you've done that, you could obviously draw those lines going up. Our middle line, I should have used a longer ruler for this. Okay. And then we'll have this line going straight up to the end over there. Okay, now that we have got that, we want to grab the full length of this over here, which we can see is 105. So we are going to take our ruler once again. And we are going to measure 105. Okay. Now that we've got our points over there, we can then extend that line going up. So basically what we're doing is we're just getting in the framework, so to speak, of the isometric drawing before we get the whole drawing in. Okay, then we know that the cut from the 105 measurement happens at a point where it's 35 millimeters in from the right side. So we are going to measure... 35 millimeters okay. and then we're going to draw a line going up 
Okay, so you should have something that looks like this so far. Now, you know, you're probably thinking, okay, well, that's great. Let's get started <laughs> on what we're actually going to be doing. So this is just to help you so that when you start drawing, you can see where the cut is going to be. So if you would even like to, you can draw the middle points between the two cut lines. In. So pretty much everything from this point onwards is going to be cut out. Okay, for me, we're going to start at the back here just because I think it's going to be a little bit easier to start to get part of our back measurements in. So we're going to start off by taking this height here, this full height here of 48, okay? So we're going to have 48, and then we're going to draw that line in. Just give me one second, I've got to do something, and then I'll continue. Okay, so... I'm going to just make that point a little bit darker because I realize you can't see it. So that point's over here. Okay, we're then going to draw a line at this point here. Now if we have a look at our measurements, we know that this has got a measurement of 20. So we're going to measure 20 at that point. Just like this over here. And we're going to draw that line going Okay, so we're going to find the total height of this over here. We obviously know that we have got 48 and the top half of a hexagon. So in order to get the total height of this point here, we are obviously going to have to draw in a, an auxiliary view of the hexagon so that we can have our reference. So I'm going to do it at the top here. Okay, just so that it's out of the way, we're going to take the measurement of 48. So you're going to grab your compass. Okay, we've got our compass here. We're going to take the 48 measurement. Just like this over here. I'm going to pick a point. Just do my point right over here. Okay, that's 48. And then... I'm going to do my little arcs, like that over there. And then from there, I'm just going to quickly draw up this hexagon. And then from the middle, there we go. Draw a line, okay. Then we can obviously measure that line. So it would be one, two, three, nine, two. So that's 42, it should be. Obviously, I can't extend my ruler a bit more. So you can take your compass as well if you prefer. Grab that measurement. And it is, like I said, a measurement of 42. Okay. So if you want to write it down, that you remember it, you can do that. It's absolutely not a problem at all. And then we're going to take that 42 measurement. So we're going to take 42, we can line up at this point here. And we're going to continue drawing in the image. Now it's important to know that we will obviously see what's happening on the side over here. Okay. Um... But as we go further backwards, we might not see so much anymore. So just keep that in mind. I'm just letting you know, which is why I'm making this line solid. Make sure you keep your ruler steady so that you do not get double lines like what I've just done. And don't do it anyways, because I've just made a mistake now. Which is making this line solid. Because I'm not paying attention. Okay. Okay, so now we've got these lines up. Obviously, we have got our measurements of 48. That's supposed to be a light construction line. Then we bring those lines backwards, and then we'll be back on track. Okay, there we go. So now we want to grab the full length of this, which we know once again is 96. So we're going to grab our ruler. 
measure 96 okay so we're going to extend those just a little bit more so obviously you reach that 96 point just like this okay from there we are going to have a look at our image here you can see that we've got sort of a slope going here so the side slope down followed by a slope in the middle here so we can see that it slopes from the center okay and then we've got these slopes here as again according to our hexagon so if you would like to you can take this line up and obviously grab the measurement of the line here so that you can grab the measurement for the sides so you can take your compass and grab that measurement once you've got the measurement you can put it at this point over here as well as at this point over here okay from that point you'll be able to make your solid line which I obviously tried to make earlier. There we go. Okay, and then you can draw your slope from the side here and here as well. Okay, then we will obviously have a line here because of the slope. So that will land up at this point here. And if you'd like to, you can bring this line here as well. Okay, now we obviously want to get this front slope here. So we need to work out the measurement first of what it's going to be. Because they don't give it here, they obviously give us the depth of it here or the width of it. So we're going to use these lines here to figure it out. So if you have a look, these two lines line up, which gives us a measurement of 24. So we can find our middle point, which will be half of 96. So that will be 48. Be at this point here. And you can bring that point forward. Just like this over here. And then from there, we can do our 24 measurements. So we'll obviously have 12 on either side. So that will be 12. And that will be 24 and then we will obviously have the measurement of six from this point here and then i would advise that you just draw a rectangle obviously on light construction lines just to help you with grabbing that point okay so we've obviously got that over there now if we have a look at this drawing here, we can obviously see that we've got a space and then we've got another protruding um, part of the drawing. So we can see that we've got the circle which is protruding followed by webs um, on the sides over here. Okay. The reason I mention it is because we may or may not see all parts of the back depending on how far this part goes so we are going to grab that height just to see how it affects the drawing okay so we know how far we've got to draw this in okay so i hope i'm making sense so for now if you want to i like to see my drawing be a little bit more complete so i like to fill in the lines that are available to be filled in so that's just something i tend to prefer this line actually goes down here you can bring it across though for when your web is there anyways are we going to have a measurement or line down there as well and then from there we're going to draw in this line here and this line here okay once we have done that we'll obviously have this line over here Okay, so now we obviously want to find the center point, which is these points here. We're going to extend those lines further so that we can get our circle length, 
so that we obviously know where to start cutting so we can continue working with the back okay so we're going to start by taking the end of this forward okay we're going to bring this there and then we are going to follow that by just bringing that at the back over there okay now we know that the circle has a measurement or a diameter of 36 millimeters so we're going to use that to obviously draw in our square here so we know 36 divided by 2 will give us 15 plus 3 that's 18 so we're going to measure 18 on either side so we've got 18 and 36 and if you want to make it easier on yourself you could also just measure 18 and then make a mark 18 18 18 and 18 just to make sure that you've got all sides accurate okay so once we have got those measurements we're going to basically draw in a circle which I'm sure you guys know how to do by now. What I am not going to do, however, is draw the circle this low because I don't feel like redrawing it twice. So I'm just going to draw the building blocks, which is the square, and then I'm going to bring those up by the height of 40 that we're given here. So you can see I've got the square here, and then I'm going to bring that line up, which was already up, this line up, this line up and this line up as well okay and then from there i'm going to measure 40 on each line so we've got 40 now it's important to remember that just because these two share a line they don't share a point from here we're going to measure 40 again okay then from this point here we will measure 40 and from this point here as well we'll measure 40 okay you can see the square is starting to fill, form at the top again. So we can join those lines. There we go. So we've got this line here, this line here. And we've obviously got this line at the back here as well. Now we obviously need our middle points, so that's easy. You'll just bring those straight up. So there we've got a middle. There we've got a middle. And now we just draw those in obviously super easy then we've got our square again although we obviously have to have it touching both sides okay so now that we've got that in we're going to do the procedure that we do when we're drawing our circle if you struggle with this i'm not going to do a complete explanation here in this video i do have a video on how to draw a circle in isometric so if you're really struggling that's the video to watch but basically, we're going to go from the obtuse angle to the obtuse angle, obtuse to obtuse. And we're going to do the same from these sides here. So we've got obtuse to obtuse and obtuse to obtuse. From there, we're going to draw in our circle. Obviously, remembering that one part of the circle gets chopped away. So we can start off with this edge of the circle here which is giving me a hard time apparently. Just make sure you keep yours neatly and you don't lose points. You don't want to make little squiggles. We're going to draw this side of the circle as well. Okay. And then the last one, which will be this point here the circle okay now that we've got that we're obviously going to draw in the part where the circle gets cut so we know that it gets cut at these points here you can obviously see by looking at your image over there so we will cut the circle at this point here that's very uneven. Let me just do this one a little bit as well. Okay. Okay. So now that we've got that, we're going to focus on the next thing, which will be the webs. The webs obviously have a thickness of eight. 
but because we've cut um, the webs in half, the thickness, this one will be the only one that's eight, but you won't really see it. We will get to that. The rest will be four. So you're going to measure your measurement of four. Okay. And then you're going to go to the bottom here with a measurement of four as well. All right. And you are then going to cut and cut again. So you should have this so far. I think mine's a little bit wide at the bottom. So just make sure your thicknesses are the same. Um, obviously, I think I did a five at the bottom here. But just be careful in making sure that you have the right measurements at all times. Okay, there's four. Okay, then... Uh, you can do the same at this point here. So you're going to have four at the bottom, four at the top, and you're going to join your webs like that. And then the next point or the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to draw a line going down from here onto the web line and from here onto the web line as well. It is important to remember that you never ever cut through a web so we can draw those webs in as if they were really there okay then we've obviously got the one at the back which we will see a part of so we've obviously got four and eight so there's four and there will be our eight measurement we're going to go here as well We've got four and we've got eight. Now we know that if we had to put our ruler here, we would only see the outside ones. We do not need to worry about the interior ones. And we'll have that over there. And then we can obviously bring that line back. It should be just over the other one, as you can see, because this one is the whole one because we have not cut it. Okay. And then what we can do as well is we can just draw in the edge over here because that's not going to change. Perfect. Okay. So we've got that there over, uh, right now. We obviously want to continue with the back now that we've got some points in. Obviously, we will have to draw in part of the circle first. So let's just finish up. That's going to be flat that down to the bottom and we'll have the same like that over there okay so now that we have got that drawn in we're going to move on like i say to the back so we've got six you can see that it, the slope stops right at the bottom of this line here so this line here so what you can do is you can bring these um rectangle bits that we drew in straight down and straight down like that obviously we know the slope starts from the back so if you had to draw that in over here you wouldn't necessarily see it so well but you would see it um, from this point here because it will not be a hidden detail so you can draw that in and then you can obviously draw your rectangle in as well so we've got line there this line here you'll obviously see you obviously won't see the slope at the back and you don't have to put hidden details so you don't have to worry about showing it through hidden detail either so we've got that line there that line there and we'll obviously have a line going through this point here okay so we should have this over here then we can bring before we bring this line across we obviously want to do the slope so like i said by bringing this line across i brought mine a little bit too low down we're going to touch the points so we've got this point which now needs to go to the edge so it will land up at this point here you obviously won't see um the other side you will however see a slight little slope over there um drawn in 
and then we have obviously got the rest of the top image to draw so we will have to put in this here as well as that over there okay so we've got that in and then obviously we can draw the entire back going straight through so it will look like this over here okay so that is that then completed the back now we have to focus on two more things which is really well three more the front the cut and that whole thing that was going through the middle so first we have to do obviously our um, front bit here so to start off we've obviously got to draw in this line over here okay as well as this line over here get our center point in all right so we obviously know that we've got a, a 60 degree slope so what you're going to do is you're going to draw a little box I'm going to do mine in the corner here Okay, so there's my little box then we've got a measurement of 20 and a height of 12 so we've got 20 and 12 so that will be over there okay just to check it is 12 yes okay so we're going to draw that line there and we're going to have this line over here okay and then from there we're going to draw our 60 degree line so that will be let's make sure this is a straight let's do it this way so if, um, mine's going to be upside down but you can obviously make sure yours is the right way around like that so mine is just the flip of that okay so we can take those same measurements that we've got 20 and we'll obviously have 12 at the top here so we've got 12 okay we're going to bring up that middle line there should line up um, if it doesn't well then somewhere our measurements incorrect um, Okay, we're just going to bring this middle line going all the way through. If I did not mention that, I apologize. Sometimes I talk to myself and I do guys. Um, so there you can see that line's going straight through the middle over there. And then we can obviously draw in our little slope. So obviously we know this is the 20 measurement. And we need to grab the point for where the space is. So we're going to grab this point here. Okay. You can see where the top is here, we're going to grab that measurement and draw it in right over here. Okay, it should look like this. I'm just going to go ahead and make it solid and then draw in this over here. Obviously we know there's a cut going straight through. Now from the middle, we've obviously got this beam or this, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, um, going through the middle. So we're going to grab the measurements for it, obviously. So we're going to start off by getting our middle point. So we know that it's got a thickness of 24. Half of it is obviously not going to be here. So we're going to have 12 and then 24. That's not 12. Okay, we've got 12, 24. I thought something wasn't looking right. Okay, so we've got our middle measurements. Then we obviously know it touches right at the top of this here. So we're going to just start off by extending it out. So we've got this line here and this line here. 
Then we have got an exterior thickness of 16. So we are going to put our 16 measurement here. Okay, just like this over here. All right. And then we also know that I've drawn it too low. Okay. So let's just bring this up again. I don't know why I did that. Just take these lines going up. Obviously, we have not got a line here, but just bring it across lightly. Just going to bring this whole shape up. I don't know why I've drawn it so low. Okay, so let's just grab these measurements at the top as well. Okay. Yeah. And then it's obviously got a like height of 16. So this we know is 12 because of how I drew it. So we need to extend those down so we get the correct measurement of 16. So we can measure over there there we go it's just slightly longer okay and then we can obviously bring our middle point across okay so i mentioned bringing the middle points across because what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut it so that you can actually see what's going on here so we bring the middle point across then we draw in square lines yeah yeah then we can obviously bring this here as well as this here except we're going to need to bring that up there and then the rest we're going to close off over here just like that and then we're obviously going to draw the line going straight through the sliding car right over there we obviously will have this measurement as well, except this one goes all the way through to the middle. So we want to grab that middle piece there. And then we're going to draw that going straight through like that. Okay. Obviously, we know because it goes straight through, we're going to have to continue to draw it on this side as well. So we're going to grab the exterior here where we can still see our measurements. We're going to bring that across onto the line that we've just brought from here. And we're going to use it to draw this point in here. Okay. We also know that we've got this measurement here that we need to do again on the side here. So we're going to measure 20 from this point here. We're going to bring up over here. And then we're going to grab once again this measurement and put it at this point over here. Okay, once you've done that, you can obviously draw in your 60 degrees. Okay, there we've got that line which will go all the way to the square that we've drawn over here. We will obviously have that measurement go straight through as well. Okay, you can extend it out to the back because obviously we know it sticks out at the back as well. And then we're going to grab the top points as well. So this is the one top point. And then the other top point will be this point here. Perfect. Okay, maybe it's good if I bring it straight through on just one of the lines. I would recommend that you do it as well. Just so that when we measure, we know we've got it accurately done. Okay, 
I'm also going to quickly just draw in this middle line before we do the end beam. Okay, we should have that. And then we're going to do this back beam. So we know the full length of the beam will be 16 plus 105 plus 55. So I'm going to quickly just grab my calculator and work out the total length. So 16 plus 105 plus 55 is 176. So 176. So I'm going to just do 170 for now of this point here because my measurements will be raised off you can see I, I don't have the small ones and then I'll add the six using this ruler here yeah okay so there's our end okay and then from there we can draw in obviously our block so there we've got that point there we will have this point here point here and then we'll bring it across we'll have a line over there and then a line over here as well okay once you have got that are these lines supposed to line up is my line skew okay my line slightly skew okay so these should be in line with each other that's why i say my line is slightly skewed so just make sure you've measured yours correctly i'm just going to leave it for now because you guys know that this should be in line okay then we're going to hatch the interior or the cut line also this line here should not be a solid line i don't know why i drew it solid That should not be a solid line. It should look just like this. Okay. When now we're gonna hatch it. So when we hatch, I like to use my set square obviously, and I like to do intervals of five to keep it even. So you can see I do a light line there. Remember your hatching needs to be lighter than the rest of your lines. Okay, then we've got a line there, a line of five to there, then it goes through to the other side. And you can see I'm just lining up the lines on my ruler to make sure that when I draw the lines that they are equally spaced so that it looks neat and tidy. And that way you will have a really nice hatching. Also remember you're always hatching 45 degrees. So I don't know if I did just mention that, but just to reiterate it, always hatching 45 degrees. Okay. okay, we've got that over there, this one over here. Make sure your hatching also touches both sides and does not extend over the sides. Obviously, if they do extend over the sides, you'll just have to erase those, but it's just easier to try and prevent it from the start. And then it just makes your life a lot easier. Okay. I like to start on this side because obviously we've got where the ruler can touch the ruler because there's no measurements on this side here if I had to flip it. So I like to start on this side so that by the time I am done with the hatching here, when I have to hatch the other side, I could just flip the ruler and use the measurements that I have from this side and kind of mirror them onto the other side. So I will obviously show you how to do that now. I need to do the last measurement. There we go. Okay. So what I mean by that is I just use the line. So you can see there's a line over here. There's a line over here. Obviously, there will need to be a five lines, which should be here. Do not guesstimate. I'm doing it, but do not do that. And you can obviously use these points as your lines to do the other side. Okay, so neatly down the way at the bottom is where all of these lines will be. Now we can add those in. Okay, 
that do not line up, make sure yours line up. And then when you're done, you should have your final drawing looking like this. Obviously with this in line at the back, as to not have a skew line. So I do hope this helped you, Matrix, and that you feel a little bit more confident drawing isometrics, especially if there's a cut in it. So thank you for watching and good luck for your exams.